Greetings and welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ico, and my co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So, Chris, episode four, season four, what do you think? Um, you know what? Once again, we've got a pretty um, standard, you know, classic Star Trek-y kind of plot. You know, these are the kind of things that could have happened in any random TNG episode. And I'm just, I'm still exhausted by these characters, but you know what? We're, <laughs> it's way too late for me, but we're moving in a good direction. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, it's, it's time for them to die. <laughs> Book. Even though the mind meld with Tarina helped at the time, the peace he felt has been fleeting. I've encouraged him to talk to Dr. Culber, but I feel him pulling into himself. So this episode starts out with Burnham going to Navarre with Saru mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Discovery. Don't know why they all have to go again. <laughs> Just for fun. Doing a lot of trips out there. Yeah. Um, we got uh, Colbert. There's a captain's log in the beginning, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, we find out that Colbert's working on stuff for the crew, which yes. is the bar. He's yeah. like, I recommend people just go to the bar. Everybody's a little stressed yeah. right now. Relax. Yeah. Everybody, drunk. just stop talking to me. I got enough shit to deal with. I got two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> go you know, to the bar. I deal with Tilly and this yeah. and that. Mm -hmm. I'm following Dr. Colbert's advice mandating downtime to help with their psychological and emotional well-being. Well, they go there and the president are all like, I want to join, but mm -hmm. I also want to get the hell out if I want to get the hell out. Mm -hmm. And that is a dumb clause for the Federation, they're right. They can't have everybody just being able to jump out all willy-nilly. Yeah, it's just like, uh, thanks for the resources, we're done. Bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you gotta share the resources, be like, hey, your world has nothing but condoms. <laughs> Send us cadets. Yeah. We'll only kill one of them, I promise. <laughs> Till he goes yeah, on Yeah, our training missions are like, Yeah. We need cadets. Couldn't, couldn't do that in a holodeck. No. Safeties. Till he, uh, till he goes to Starfleet headquarters, or I guess Starfleet Academy, and she meets Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. And I was excited to get more Cronenberg this episode. Uh, the bits with him and uh, George Yu from the last season were things I was really interested in. That seemed like Cronenberg-esque kind of things. Mm -hmm. This seemed like, do you want us to come over and say some lines about like the Academy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that didn't have it. Like last season, we were talking about like the the mirror universe and you know they're merging, they're coming back apart, and we got like a teaser that. You know, some guy from the JJ verse had crossed over at some point, and I'm like, okay, we can let's, yeah, let's do some more of this. TNG esque outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sorry, it's all about uh, hey, Tilly, you'll be great. Mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, Why don't you uh, take these kids out? Yeah. Don't get anyone killed. <laughs> but with the DMA, Starfleet needs personnel now more than ever. But if people can't even work together, precisely. One might say that today's exercise is about the very future of Starfleet. First thing she does is not get to that M-class planet, crashes on an L-class planet. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, one of them dies right off the bat. Yeah. I love it, it's like, it's telling Sasha, you know, we're on a first name basis, mm -hmm. Sasha. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't really, sit back down, she's like done this. <laughs> sit back down, she's still <laughs> sitting. How about you order her to put a seatbelt on? Yes, yes, it wouldn't be Starfleet if there were yeah, seatbelts. They crash, everybody's on the ground. Yeah. I was like, you chair break? Everybody hold on to something. I'm a trained pilot. I do not. No, Sasha, sit down. That's an order. Protective shield is important. You know what? The, fe the Federation probably had some sort of like massive issue with seatbelts. Like the same way genetic engineering's banned because of the, because of the, the, the uh, eugenics wars, there must have been some kind of seatbelt uprising. Uh, you're anti seatbelt, I see, Chris. Uh, they are. They <laughs> are. Picard was uh, on his Enterprise E there, and he's just like, oh, it's about time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then we got those in uh, Star Trek Beyond, where mm -hmm. they put the seatbelts mm -hmm. on. Well, that's the JJ. That's their. They're doing their own thing. I think they could cross over, man. You just said it. I know. No. But the theory of seatbelts. <laughs> this guy crossed over. This is over. how we tell we're not in the Star Trek universe, just because we have seatbelts. Yeah, this, this guy crossed over and mentioned something about seatbelts. In, uh, in, you know, it's like an early 21st century thing. Like, <laughs> we how bring how am back. I to keep my pants up with a seat? I don't understand. <laughs> Books uh, talking to Hugh, mm -hmm. and it's all about 
building programmable matter sand and mm -hmm. they're getting to know each other. That was fine. I was completely fine with that scene. Mm -hmm. um, it was good for Hugh. It made me like Hugh more. It made me like the book a bit more. Um, so that was actually what I would call good character building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely like to see more of that kind of stuff with you know, some of our, our wider cast of characters. And I really like that uh, book was a little less like, oh, you want to talk about it to like Hugh? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, I want to I wanna hear what Hugh's problem is. Is it that he's not human? I guess. Is it? I guess that must be it. <laughs> no, they're never going to address that. No? No. Okay. But I want it. <laughs> you do this yourself. The things you need to wipe away. Sure. You want to talk about it? Someday. How about that Balkan Romulan president and uh, her achings for Saru? That, the, god damn, she's going for it. She is thirsty. Yeah, she wants more Kelpian tea. Yeah, <laughs> gosh. Maybe it's darn. been seven years. It must be that time of the decade for her. Uh, were we doing this before this episode, or was she just... Was she just horny this episode? I don't know if we've seen this I before. I felt she was horny last episode with Book, but just figured like after the mind melt, be like, no, not my type. I guess. <laughs> and she did like the yeah, little calm I mean, you know, kind good of for mind them. connection thing. Yeah. Good for them. But I that, mean, he that comes a, from a planet where he can provide kelp to yeah, her. That, that's a girl that knows what she wants, though. She, yeah. She's just going for it. It is called Thresh Tor, Kasha. It means shared mind. Close your eyes. Your eyes are meant to remain closed. Turnum offers, uh, offers a compromise, be like, so we're gonna have like a third party of a different committee. Of me. Yeah, and I'm gonna lead it <laughs> so that I stay important. Yes. Um, my takeaway from all this is that I think Burnham's gonna become president one day. <laughs> I'm not even sure, sure she's gonna, gonna give up the ship. I think she might yeah. still be captain of the most uh, powerful ship because it can transport anywhere mm -hmm. um, and be president. Okay. It'll be her Yeah, the, the fact that it can just Air bounce Force around. Air Force One discovered. Yeah, there we go. The fact that it can bounce around means she can do that because whenever she needs to presidentiate, she can just show up and yeah. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's happening. Allow me to serve on this committee. I am a citizen of Navarre, trained in logic, witness to your history. And I am an officer in Starfleet. Tilly stuff, yeah, they crash on the planet, mm -hmm. they argue. And there's so many classic Star Trek episodes you can compare to that plot to. Yeah, they got the ice spiders. Mm -hmm. um, we got some racism. Mm -hmm. um, nobody likes the Orions. And mm -hmm. then they find out, oh, this is an Orion who's the son of a guy who tried to fight for rights for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't you feel stupid now? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, there was uh, there was some of those classic Star Trek stuff in here. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, message. this is, uh, really reminds me of the, the TNG episode where uh, Picard was like locked in that room with all the different... We always go back to that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. He's locked in the room with the different members of the different species, and they got to work together to get out of the box. Yeah, except you wouldn't have clearance to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. That reminds me of the DS9 episode where uh, Quark and Odo got to climb up a mountain. I'm not sure they worked together, though. They just kind of bickered and kept each other motivated through fighting. <laughs> yes, yes. It's just like, I will not die before <laughs> yes. you. It's the only reason I'm yeah. still going. Yeah. I can't move. Adara gets attacked by some CGI eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't tie the rope around them yeah. and pull because, like, I'm pulling not, from the hands, I, I'm not sure they're strong. I, I guess it's fine. I don't know what that ice was supposed to be. Yeah. Like, this is just a thing that happened. I think it was the uh, phasers in the sky that they were calling spiral lightning. Yeah. Hit the ice, and yeah. then it became alive? I, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it was, but it was, like, continued to crawl up their legs and stuff. I was and, uh, kind of hoping know. the legs were going to break off. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can fix it later. We can fix it later. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I just would have liked some sort of explanation to what that was. But sure, problem X was created and solved by teamwork. Let's keep the plot going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was all that was there for him. It's like, you already got the one threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until he decides to be bait. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know. And that's correct. Him. That's the commanding officer's responsibility. Yeah, but is yeah. she the fastest? <laughs> I would. I don't. I don't understand why they couldn't just remote into the shuttle and have the shuttle start going off. Yeah, that would have made sense. But yeah. you know, 
it just it only works it's a plot convenience mm -hmm. you can only transport and stuff plot convenience wise mm -hmm. what else we got is what that about it? Oh, yeah, well, Tilly. Tilly's getting a new yeah. job. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. We're, we're getting Tilly off the ship. Yeah. Because we've already replaced Tilly. Yeah. I guess this is why we've been doing so much Adira stuff. You know, meet, meet the new Tilly. Same as season one Tilly. When Discovery first arrived, no one here trusted you. It wasn't just that you were in a 930-year-old starship and had never heard of the burn. It was the way you carried yourselves. It's like team building, Chris. If one dies, your team's smaller, and it's easier to build from there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am sort of wondering what the plan was, because you know, we said an episode or two ago that Adira is really doing the you know the season one Tilly thing. We're getting a lot of vibes. Uh, no longer like confident about every like system and all this stuff. It's yeah. more like a jibber jabber of like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also were saying you know Tilly sort of regressed as well. And uh, like one of my big complaints about season three was. How she was just, you know, getting the, like her dad's the CEO and it's like, here, just be the first officer, Tilly. Just, just go be the first officer. It's like, you shouldn't be there. But she was excelling. She was doing really well. Especially at, like in the last episode when she had to, you know, take control of their little renegade group. And, I'm uh, kind of surprised that she wasn't super depressed when she got that promotion because becoming lieutenant was the worst day of her life. Apparently. Yeah. Jeez. But Kronberg <laughs> offers her a teaching job because they've got no one else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you can't do a teach. <laughs> uh, so, I, I, yeah, I don't know um, if this was something they were always planning on doing or if, if this was, uh, is there some kind of scheduling conflict Mary Wiseman's having or apparently um, her role's not going to get smaller. So I, I don't think that's it. Well, I mean, there's no reason that they can't constantly be popping back and forth between head office and... Yeah, HQ and mm -hmm. yeah. Say in two minutes of uh, just a cadets telling us where they were from and uh, you know uh, just one right? brief things we might have gotten more than what I know about some of those guys on the bridge. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's correct. Um, yeah, hello, this is my name. I am from here. Yeah. Here's the thing I do. <laughs> I, that is more than we know about several Discovery Bridge members. Yeah. I'm just trying to think, uh, where is Reese from? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I know man. Bryce serves, yeah. but is he Hawaiian? <laughs> yeah. If I just, yeah, can he join the Hawaiian club? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, final thoughts, Chris? Final thoughts. Um, you know what? Yeah. Good episode. Give, give me something like this a couple more times, and maybe I'll, I'll be ready to be heard again. <laughs> um, but not now. Um, did I want to say anything else? Yeah, I, I guess that's probably yeah, it. Yeah, this must be one of your uh, your better episodes, because it's lower stakes. There wasn't, mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a big world-shattering thing going on. Yeah, I'm wondering if we just got kind of baited by the trailer on the whole... Um, I don't remember what they're called. The DMV? It's not the DMV. DMA. DMA. Is it the DMA? Okay. Uh, that whole thing, because that's really been kind of in the background. And after the first episode or two, this has been much smaller stories, you know, much more standard Star Trek-y things. Maybe their budget got cut. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Val Sasha. Grew up in a colony on Titan. Learned to pilot when I was 12. And coming to the Academy was the first time I'd met any non-humans. Did you feel like the CGI was kind of shitty in the um, in the shuttle bay kind of areas? I've kind of spotted crappy CGI throughout so far. Because um, I think they're... In spots, not everything, but just yeah. a few spots. I was like... I think they're using that kind of background wall holodeck-ish thing that the Mandalorian was using for backgrounds. I think that's what they're doing. And I thought it looked pretty rough in like the shuttle areas, but on the planet it looked awesome. Which I guess makes sense, because that's sort of what it was used for in The Mandalorian. Well, you know, they were probably just uh, duplicating things and reversing shots so that they only had to do the one shot. Mm -hmm. um, which was very painful during that Picard final battle with all the same ship. <laughs> I was like, no, no, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Get me some sister ships. I mean, at least I know that's a model. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Yamahara of the USS Armstrong. Is that? Armstrong, get us the hell out of here!
That wasn't the most painful episode. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. And we're getting ready to leave. Um, off the ship, at least. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I, I want to know more about some of my bridge crew, man. Mm-hmm. I want to know more about Cronenberg. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think he just got lamer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, hey... Section thirty one esque guy who uh, knows seems all very, about the yeah, JJ verse knows shit. <laughs> knows everything. Seems yeah. a bit skeptical. Could do some like terrible things for the better of the Federation or whatever. You want to teach the cadets? <laughs> <laughs> you want to teach the cadets? You want to be, you you want want to be a teaching job? When he's like, "Oh, Tilly, you want to be a teacher?" I'm just like, "Man, like it took Kirk so long to get that offer." <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if O'Brien's still teaching at the academy. Um, well, it's holodeck is. It's hologram. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Right? You just, you don't not record the hologram the greatest the greatest ever. Yeah. Well, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.